Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today I'll be tying a uh, dry fly emerger, kind of both pattern. Um, it's a attractor pattern I came up with several years ago. Um, it worked uh, really well for me in the lakes and even better in the rivers, um, especially um, smaller streams like the Skagit River and stuff, but down in uh, BC and near Hope. Um, it's worked really well for me. It's kind of, Like I said, it's kind of an attractor because it, it's got some pretty bright colors in it. Um, but it fishes at first as a dry fly because it's got CDC in it, but as it gets wet, it just sinks subsurface there, and I've had this thing crushed many times. So uh, this is what we'll be tying today, and it's just, like I said, it's just a little bit of uh, a little bit of dubbing and some and some uh, uh, rib, a little bit of CDC, and then a hackle up the front, and that's it. So real simple fly um, looking, but uh, it, it, you need to. Need to get that CDC right on the top, otherwise it, it, it doesn't look right. So, so we'll be starting off with a Hens BL354 in a size 12. Um, this is a short shanked hook. Um, it's not a very long shank on this. Um, and for, for its size, it's got a fairly large uh, gap. <clears throat> so I'll start that off. We're going to be using some Zemperfly Classic Waxed in an ADOT. Um, if you've got it in a 12 watt, use that. Um, I don't. I ran out of 12 watts, so it's actually waiting for more to come. So I'll be using that um, as my thread. So um, then for the uh, rib, I'll be using some Zemperfly hollow tinsel in copper. Um, for the dubbing, I'll be using some Zemperfly sparkle dub, uh, and I'm going to be using this peach color. I, I do it also in the sunburst and in the primrose, but I like the peach the best. And then for the CDC, some Hens CDC in yellow, and then uh, an H and H India cock cape in number one badger for the hackle. Okay, so start my tying thread. Let's get a nice base down. Cut off your excess. Sorry if you guys hear the air conditioner going in the background. It's warm as it is all the way on the west coast in Alberta right now uh, the west coast of BC and all throughout BC and Alberta so so again I'm just going to come up to the back up to the front I'm going to leave a little bit of room there for where I'm going to put my CDC and my hackle in the front put two hook hook eyes give or take I'm just going to tie in my my uh, rib on my side here, all the way back to roughly where the where the uh, barb would be if I had a barb. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of this peach out. This dubbing is really it really simple to dub on. Uh, dubs on really nicely and nice long strands too. So. You can really, like for leeches and stuff, this pulls out really nicely. So I don't want a thick body. Um, I do want a bit of a tapered body, um, I found. Uh, the other one you could use for this um, is Zemperfly's got their Kapok dubbing. That stuff floats forever in a day. The only thing is I haven't found any of the Kapok yet that is in this color scheme, right? It's more natural colors with the Kapok. So... So I'm just going to go back just a little bit just to create a bit of a thicker taper there. I'm just going to touch, 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 touch more right at the front. <clears throat> and so you can see how, how simple this stuff dubs on. It's really nice. So now I'm going to do one full wrap right at the back end of the hook with my tinsel. And then I'm going to open up. And I would like to get three, if I can, four. But three minimum. I want three wraps minimum on the body. And then I'm just going to tie that down. Take my scissors. Take that off. Some of these longer, longer strands you can just yank out of there. Okay, so now I'm going to take my whatever dubbing brush you use. I like this stone full one for this. 
and I'm just gonna give it a bit of a just give it a bit of a pull out just make it nice and rough and scruffy looking okay and some of these really really long ones out the back you can you can either nip them or pull them out but you want it scruffy but not too crazy so now depending on the CDC you've got I'm gonna to try to find two to three feathers here I've got nice ends because I'm gonna stack these on top of each other and it depends on that like I said the size of the feathers you've got how many you use um, bend to it so I don't want that that one might be okay let's see so I've got three stacked there and I'm just gonna I don't want it to flare out too much and I want it uh, no longer than the back of the hook so about there is actually pretty good so I'm gonna leave that right where it is and I'm just gonna tie that in two three good turns let's see how that looks actually looks pretty good so Sometimes you have to readjust those and pull them a bit, but that worked out really good. So, and don't don't throw this stuff away, guys. This stuff makes excellent dubbing. You, you can pull it off of the center stem. <clears throat> makes really good dubbing. So now I'm just gonna tie that down a little bit. I'm gonna take my lighter. I didn't come all the way to that. I'm gonna just cook a little bit of that uh, CDC right off at the beginning there so it got a little bit in the eye so I can tie that down nicely yeah there we go so now I've come back to the CDC and I'm gonna look for one of the shorter feathers here on the on the bottom not these big long ones in the top I'm gonna look for one of these shorter smaller feathers So that's what I'll be using. And I'm gonna grab it with my hackle pliers by the tip. And the only reason I do that is so I can actually get in there and spread all those apart and make a tie-in point. And I'm gonna cut a little triangle or a cut-in, a tie-in. And I want the shiny side facing out with this, right? So you want that shiny side of the feather facing out towards you or up or whichever way you tie it in, but you want it facing out. Just gonna finish off that head a little bit. Just a little whip finish just to get it done. Now you can use your hackle pliers or you can use your fingers. I like using my fingers. I just find, especially with these um, feathers here that I've got, they're, they're, they're pretty light, they're pretty sensitive, right? So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to break them. So I'm just stroking all my barbules back. And as I come around, I just want to make sure, do my best not to trap any. And I'd like to get four or five turns here, one in front of the other. Now sometimes with these feathers are really short, you can't do it by hand, you have to use a hackle plier. Um, I try my best to do it without, I'm just a fan of the feel, being able to feel it with by hand instead of through the hackle plier. So tied it down a couple of times in, on top. I'm just tying a little bit of head of a head. Trying to keep make sure that that eye stays clear. And I am going back a little bit onto the fly. So I want these these fibers to lay back a little bit, almost wet style style fly. A little bit of a whip finish cut off your thread <clears throat> cut off or pull out your excess hackle and then just a drop of head cement onto that head 
In this case, it's Sally Hansen's, but you can do whatever you like. And that is the finished fly. Right there. So that's it. It, uh, like I said, it's it's not a, extremely hard, but you definitely want to make sure you get these this this uh, CDC laying in there right, because you don't want big feathers like this and curved ones, because then they'll they'll sit down or they'll sit sideways, and you don't like that. You don't you don't want that. You want feathers like this, right? Fairly straight, and then when I pull it together, it they they come together quite nicely. Right? And then you want to stack two or three, four, depending on the quality of CDC you have and the length of CDC you have. Um, and then, again, with the hackle too, I, I like it that it's facing back a bit. I do like it, like the last one that I showed you, this first one actually has them standing up just a little bit more, but not much. Right? So <clears throat> that'll help it uh, sit on top of that, uh, that water. Um, but like I said, I like having this thing getting wet um, after you know a cast or two of it floating. I like it that it that it sinks just below the surface. I actually find that I get more hits just below the surface when it's uh, when it's drowned than it, than I do when it's on top. So, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you subscribed, thank you very much. If you haven't, please consider doing so. Once this channel hits a thousand subscribers, I will be giving away a copy of the books that I wrote, as well as a selection of flies that I've tied on this channel. So spread the word. Tie lines, everyone.